I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Right now, I am reading the last few chapters of the first book of Chronicles. This is the last months of David's life. He was king for 40 years, and this is in, in his 40th year, the 40th year of his reign. So we're in the last year. He's winding down. He's setting things up for Solomon. He's making, he's getting things ready for Solomon to take over. So here we go. This is chapter 28. David assembles the leaders of Israel. Solomon appointed to build the temple. David exhorts Solomon and the people to keep the commandments. David gives Solomon the pattern and materials for the temple. And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over the, th over the thousands, and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king, and of his sons, with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then did... <clears throat> Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father, to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Ju Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah the house of my father. And among the sons of my father he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments at, as at this day. So let us pause a moment here. What's going on? David, in the, in the previous chapter, we had a list of all the officers in David's court, all the, the commanders of the army, the stewards over his various properties, his fields, his vineyards, his uh, houses, all these things. And these are the people that he's calling together. And the mighty men, his personal bodyguard. So these are. this is the royal court. He's not making a proclamation to all Israel. This is his household that he's talking to. And he reiterates that he wanted to build the temple, but God said he couldn't do it because he had been a man of war all his life. And God said, no, you, you are a man of war, not a man of peace. And so you conduct your wars and will have your son who will live in peace. He will have rest. He will do the work for peace. And this kind of reminds me of uh, John Adams in the American Revolution. Well, after the American Revolution, when John Adams went to Europe as a diplomat to negotiate Somebody asked him uh, why, you know, I can't remember what the question was. Like, why, don't, why don't you study the, why, why, why are you studying war? Why don't you study these other things? He said, well, I have to study war so that my children can study diplomacy, so that their children can study industry, so that their children can study the arts. Because we have to build up the we have to build up the nation. We have we have to go in a progression. If I just study the arts, then I am not setting things up for the next generation. And it's the same thing here. I like the, the I like this that God, God is having the same kind of thing. God says, David, you are a man of war. You do your work of war. Let the next generation do the work of peace. Anyways. Now, verse 8. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, 
and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. So again, I should have just finished that paragraph out really, but so he's been a man of war, but he's telling the people, you got to keep the commandments of God and you will live at peace. Pass it down to the generations. So anyways, verse nine, and thou Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But as if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof, and of the treasuries thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlors thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat, and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things, also for the courses of the priests and the Levites, and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and for all the vessels of the service in the house of the Lord. He gave of gold by weight for, uh, for things of gold, for all instruments of all manner of service, silver also for all instruments of silver by weight, for all instruments of every kind of service, even the weight of the candlesticks of gold and for their lamps of gold by weight for every candlestick and for the lamps thereof, and for the candlesticks of silver by weight, both for the candlestick and also for the lamps thereof, according to the use of every candlestick. And by weight he gave gold for the tables of shewbread, for every table, and likewise silver for the tables of silver, also pure gold for the flesh hooks of the, and the bowls and the cups, and for the golden basins he gave gold by weight for every basin, and likewise silver by weight for every basin of silver, and for the altar of incense refined gold by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. In other words, Solomon, it's called Solomon's temple because he built it, but he did not design it. He didn't even receive the revelation of how to design it. David was given by revelation the pattern or the design, the layout, the, the how, how the temple was supposed to be built. That was given in Revelation to David. David wrote it out. He drew out the plans. And then he gave them to Solomon and said, this is what God wants you to build. Verse 20. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship, every willing, skillful man, for any manner of service. Also, the princes and all the people will be holy at thy commandment. There you go. So David is telling Saul, look, you've got everything you need. The people will be support you. The people will there. The, the, you got the skilled workers. I've given you the plans. I've given you the material. You might need some more material. He, he did tell him in a previous chapter, you know, if you want to get more material, that's fine. But this is what we need to do. This, this is the end goal. And he's giving Solomon the charge. He's not just saying, Solomon, you're going to build a temple. Go figure it out. He is laying it out for you. He is saying, this is what God wants you to do. This is the plan. This is what God has revealed to me that will be his temple. Just like with Brigham Young in the Salt Lake Temple, Brigham Young laid out the architectural plans for the Salt Lake Temple. And when he died, those plans were given to John Taylor and then to Wilfred Woodruff, who completed what Brigham Young had started. Now, David didn't start the construction, like Brigham Young did, but 
he did have the plans. So one last chapter in First Chronicles that we will pick up in the next video.